Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel, we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video, we'll continue with our emergency medication series. We'll be reviewing lidocaine, so let's jump straight in. Here we go. Lidocaine is also known as lignocaine. In this session, we'll be reviewing the mechanism of action of lidocaine, the indications, the dosages for both adult and pediatric resuscitation, and some of the precautions and side effects. Lidocaine depresses the automaticity of the Purkinje fibers, raising the stimulation threshold in the ventricular muscle fibers, which makes the ventricle less likely to fibrillate. The indications for lignocaine includes lignocaine can be used as an alternative to amiodarone in cardiac arrest from VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia. can also be used for stable monomorphic ventricular tachycardia with preserved ventricular function, stable polymorphic ventricular tachycardia with normal baseline QT interval and preserved LV function when ischemia is treated and electrolyte balance is corrected. It can also be used for stable polymorphic VT with baseline QT interval prolongation if torsades is suspected. In cardiac arrest from VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, the initial dose is 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram IV or IO. For refractory VF, we may give an additional 0.5 to 0.75 mg per kilogram IV push and repeat it in 5 to 10 minutes. Maximum dose is 3 mg per kilogram. The pattern followed by clinicians in VF or pulses ventricular tachycardia arrest is usually high quality CPR, defibrillate once, defibrillate for the second time, give epinephrine, defibrillate for the third time, give lidocaine, defibrillate for the fourth, give epi, defibrillate for the fifth, give lidocaine, defibrillate for the sixth, give epinephrine. I always remember that after the equal number of shocks, Shock 2, 4, 6, the patient, for instance, will receive an epi. And after uneven number of shocks, shock 3 and 5, the patient will receive lidocaine. All assuming that the rhythm did not change from VF or pulseless ventricular tachycardia to something else in between. If this pattern is followed, your patient will receive one dose of epinephrine every 4 minutes and one dose of lidocaine every four minutes. Usual dose interval for both medications are every three to five minutes as per the American Heart Association guidelines. It should be noted that lidocaine doses could be replaced with amiodarone as an alternative. We have discussed amiodarone in a previous video in the emergency medication series. See the card above. For stable VT, wide complex tachycardia of an uncertain type, or with significant ectopy, doses ranging from 0.5 to 0.75 mg per kilogram and up to 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram may be used. Repeat 0.5 to 0.75 mg per kilogram every 5 to 10 minutes. Maximum total dose is 3 mg per kilogram. For the maintenance infusion, your dose is 1 to 4 mg per minute, which is 30 to 50 mics per kg per minute. The pulse dosage for lidocaine for refractory ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia is 1 mg per kilogram 
IV or IO. Your ET dosage is 2 to 3 milligrams per kilogram. The maintenance infusion is 20 to 50 mics per kilogram per minute. We need to repeat the bolus dose if the infusion was initiated more than 15 minutes after the initial bolus therapy. For rapid sequence intubation, you could also give 1 to 2 milligrams per kilogram IV or IO. The pattern followed for pediatric cardiac arrest with VF or passes ventricular tachycardia is the same as for the ACLS. So your equal number of shocks will be followed by epinephrine and your uneven number of shocks, shock 3 and shock 5, will be followed by lidocaine. As long as the rhythm did not change from VF or pulses VT to another rhythm. Lidocaine is contraindicated for prophylactic use in AMI patients. In the presence of impaired liver function, reduce the maintenance dose and not the loading dose. Discontinue the infusion immediately if signs of toxicity develop. Also caution in patients with renal insufficiency. Some of the side effects of lidocaine can include muscle twitching, slurred speech, hearing loss, altered level of consciousness, and seizures. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. And please don't forget to leave a comment. Your comments really helps out our channel. We'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.